hey y'all welcome back to my channel and welcome to another day in the 12 collabs of choimus Woo! that's correct in the month of december i'm uploading 12 collab videos so subscribe because i know you don't want to miss out now for today's video i am going to be sharing with you my eyeshadow collection i was going to say eyeshadow palette collection but i'm going to show you all of my palettes in addition to all of my single shadows that I've accumulated this wear this year as well. Today I am collaborating with Lara from Lara Likes Mascara and she is just rounding off a two year no buy and she's obviously a lover of makeup. Her name is Lara Likes Mascara. So she just has a lot of new insights and a lot of lessons she's learned from this experience that she shares on her channel. Today we are both gonna be showing y'all our eyeshadow palette collections. So definitely check out her video and her channel. If you like content on mindful consumerism and empties and tips on using your makeup and tips on not shopping, then definitely check out Laura's channel. I think she has a lot of good stuff to offer. And wouldn't it be cool if we got her to a thousand subscribers? Hmm? Now let's get right into my eyeshadows. Look at this eyeshadow. So these are my little storage pieces that I keep my eyeshadows in. So I have this big acrylic organizer like with three main open drawers. So I'll show you that. I have this little um, like office supply <laughs> organizer with three small drawers where I keep my mini palettes. So we'll go through that as well. And then I have this clear kind of, um, what is this, like palette displayer that I ha keep most of my most used palettes in. And I'll rotate these every now and again, but mostly these stay the same. So let me show you these first, actually. All right, so this is my like top shelf kind of stuff. And first I have my, this is kind of gonna go in a weird order. I don't have all of my ColourPop palettes together or all of my Nabla palettes together. It's more classified by how much I use them and their size of palette. So um, first I have my Sailor Moon Pretty Guardian ColourPop palette and I like it because it's just pretty to look at. So I like having it out on display. And also the packaging is adorable and holographic, yes. And I know a lot of people um, kind of didn't like this formula. I have to admit it's pretty dusty, like very powdery, but with these kind of colors, you know, the formula's gotta do what it's gotta do for those, for those colors to show up. So I'm not too mad at it. I like tapping into this palette for these brights because I don't have a lot of shades that show up so neon. Second color pop palette on display is the Raw Beauty Christie collaboration palette at Forest Sight. She's gorgeous, this grungy rainbow, this kind of like mossy rainbow that we all need. And I did a three lips on palette with this. I really enjoy it. Gonna stay on my top shelf. Oh, I also did a comparison video between this palette and the So Jaded and the Alter Ego Artemis if you are curious to see how many overlapping shades there are with those. Next is this little magnetic palette. It's not really truly a palette. It's kind of like a random assortment of things. Here's the Milani Blush and Luminoso, the Hula Bronzer, Sydney Grace um, shadow, another Sydney Grace shadow. This is in Always Yours, I think, or Mythical. Actually, I think it is Always Yours, yeah and Natasha Denona single that I got free with purchase on a Sephora order and a couple ColourPop singles from the I Think I Love You palette. And this is a random satin cream shade from a pretty vulgar Nightingale palette. Yeah, that's where it's from. So this is just a very like useful little collection of singles. Again, I might switch out these singles every now and then, but it's a good like, just grab one thing and have my whole face done kind of palette. This is something I use off camera almost every time I film, if not every time I film, and I never show it to y'all. So this is the Viseart uh, Brow and Eye Palette. Yeah, and what I use this for is to fill in my hairline because I have a pretty like Dragon Ball Z Vegeta level, Vegeta, Vegeta, why is that? Why am I saying that so strangely? <laughs> Vegeta level Widow's Peak. And when I part my hair on the side, it looks like I just have this huge bald spot when really it's just my widow's peak. So I do fill in my hairline on one side with this black. I haven't used this a ton on the eyes actually, so I don't have a lot to say in terms of that. I don't know, this palette wasn't like truly remarkable to me when I got it, 
So it just has a very like functional kind of boring purpose. Next are my Ultra Ego palettes. I straight up use these a lot and that's why I keep them on display where they're easy to reach and I don't need to open any drawers to get to them. So this is a Daydream palette. It's a dupe for the Huda Beauty, Huda Beauty. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm back to saying Huda Beauty. Huda Beauty Nude Nudes palette. Really enjoy it. Fairy Tale is my favorite shade. It was featured in a recent Duochromes um, eyeshadow video that I did in collaboration with Mia's Virtual Vanity. And I did wear this palette on my engagement photo shoot, actually. It's just a beautiful, romantic kind of color scheme. The packaging is very heavy duty and like actually heavy and the mirror is great. Now I have the Artemis palette, which I have featured so many times on my channel and I rearranged this, also filmed a video doing that. Um, and this is like a very orange heavy palette, which is not my favorite color to wear on my eyes, but I really do appreciate kind of the range that this has. Next, this is my magnetic palette that I keep a bunch of depotted shadows. So all of these are essentially from the ColourPop Yes Please palette, the really warm toned kind of sunset one. And I also have some random singles plus other singles floating within my palettes from the ColourPop I Think I Love You palette. Now discontinued, what a shame. Some singles from the Pretty Vulgar Nightingale palette. This is from like a random Tarte Rainforest of the Sea palette and some Innisfree Single Shadows, which is a Korean brand. And this is a random thing I got in an Ipsy one time. <laughs> so this is kind of like where I hold the random assortment of things. I do like using this shade for my brows, but really I don't dip into this a lot just because I will first grab for a pre-made palette over like this, this, <laughs> but I, I do plan to kind of revamp this and add some more shades from my ColourPop palettes into here. By the way, if you're looking at my nails, they're kind of like color changing, really gold where it's really warm and then darker towards the tip where it's colder. And these are from Beauty Shop Beauty by jasmineyin.com. I'll link her down in my description and you could use the code Sally for 10% off if you do want to order any acrylic nails. I don't make any money off of that, but um, it's always there for you to use if you want to. Next, I have this ColourPop palette of singles and I have 24 ColourPop singles. Now, these are actually a Sydney Grace singles, but um, these 20 are ColourPop. <laughs> and here I have Sydney Grace um, Tiara, Mythical, something copper that I got free as gift and XOXO. And let me show you my other ColourPop shades while I'm at it. My last four ColourPop singles I keep in this four pan um, empty palette because these are all my duochromes. So this is Tea Garden, Glass Bowl, Earth Shine, and oh, it's called Golden Egg. That's what it was. So that's that. Over here, I have my So Jaded palette. She is well loved, has been rearranged a couple of times. I made videos for both of those times. And the glitters, the press glitters, I threw out because who wants that? <laughs> and I replaced them with singles from the ColourPop I Think I Love You. That is this kind of very light gold and I think this deep uh, brown shimmer. It's a staple. So I showed you my ColourPop singles as well as some of my Sydney Grace single shadows. Here are my other Sydney Grace shadows just while we're at it. And this is The Greatest Gift, Winter Garden, Under the Sea. And here is Urban Decay's single shadow in the shade Lounge. A lot of these were featured in my duochrome video that I just uploaded a couple days ago. So definitely check out that video if you want to see eye swatches and live swatches of these. Now let's move on to this big boy and I'm gonna have a lot of glare. Um, so let me pull out the drawers. So one first drawer, this is my Anastasia and Huda Beauty drawer. So I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Jackie Ina palette and she's well loved, beautiful. These are also some shades that show up a lot brighter or that show up truly as bright as they look in the pan like the ColourPop Sailor Moon one. So I like reaching into this for these two. I have Soft Glam, we have all seen her before. Classic, very warm tone, neutral palette. And Sultry, who I have kind of been falling back in love with this year. And these tones are just so sparkly and gorgeous and really glammed up neutrals. I've hit pan on this shade too. And uh, I really like this shade Cinder and Cyborg. Both of those just, I love. This is gonna be used a lot this winter season by me. And my three 
little mini Huda Beauty palettes. I have the Nude Light, which looks like this truly fairy-like color story. I'm obsessed with it. I still really like this. This is something I use if I want a fairy-like look, very light, very pastel. I'm not gonna get a lot of depth out of this. <laughs> and then the Huda Nude Rich palette has some pink-toned mattes, which I really enjoy because recently I've been reaching for pink tone neutrals over like warm or orange neutrals. So I have been liking this one. It's kind of beat up. I've dropped it a few times, whoops. <laughs> and then lastly, I have the Huda Beauty Smoky Obsessions palette, which is old, it's discontinued, but it shares a lot of similar shades as the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette. As you can see, it has kind of the same vibe going on. So there's that one. This silver is truly very titanium aluminum foil silver and everything else on here works really well too. These shades though are so similar kind of they don't really perform that differently from each other so um, I kind of wish that this mid, mid to dark depth of brown was replaced with another kind of shade but it is what it is. Next drawer. Uh, I love this drawer too. This holds some of my Nabla palettes. I have the side by side palette and it's very, very similar in the color scheme to both the Soft Glam and the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palettes. I did make a separate comparison video with those, but I honestly think that the Nabla formula is easier to work with than the Anastasia Beverly Hills formula because these show up just as pigmented, but they don't have all the powder kick up that Anastasia has because these mattes are kind of more creamy and I really like that about this. So after trying this palette, I almost immediately purchased the Nabla Dreamy 2, which I have been lusting after for so long. Just look at this packaging. It's so like spacey and celestial and it has these kind of holographic fluffy designs reminding me of the Milky Way kind of. So anyways, here's what the Dreamy 2 palette looks like. This is what I'm wearing on my eyes today. If you, if you were wondering what I was wearing in the intro of this video, it's this palette. All over the lid, I'm featuring REM. On my inner corner, I have Lucid Dream and then I used Offline to kind of outline my eyes. I cannot wait to play with this palette more. There's, I've never seen a palette like this before in terms of its color story. It's just so fun. So I am so excited for this one. Next, I have a couple of Juvia's Place palettes and these are my only Juvia's Place. I have the Saharan, which is like half neutral, half semi colorful, but still doesn't really get too, too colorful. And I mean, I don't know what to say. I really like this formula and I like this palette. Next, I have the Saharan 2, which is discontinued now, which is a shame because this is such a marketable color story to people. Oh, there's like a, a, a hair there, don't mind that. So yeah, I mean, this has a lot of like neutrals. This is such a great like cranberry, um, kind of a very berry shade. And all of these, I mean, I know Angelica Nyquist is just so obsessed with this palette. I can see why these shades and these shimmers are outstanding. So those are my two Julia's place. And the last thing in this drawer is my Pat McGrath. Mothership Sublime Bronze Ambition Palette, which I think is discontinued too. Uh, it makes me so sad that, that brands discontinue all these things. Um, but I mean, whatever the business has to do, I guess. But this is just so gorgeous. It has a variety of neutral tones with different undertones. And um, this one very creamy, very, very creamy matte that can pretty much, it gets darker as I build it up on my eyes. So it kind of serves a purpose of multiple depths of brown. But anyways, I really like this palette. I am reminded every time I pull it out how much I like it, even though I sometimes forget about it <laughs> a little bit within my collection because I get new and shinier things and this is a little bit of an older palette for me. Drawer number two is done. Now for the final drawer, which has some of my older kind of palettes in it. So I do have a couple more ColourPop here. I have ColourPop Dream Street, which I also made a video rearranging. As you can tell, I really like doing that with my palettes to make them in a way that makes more sense to my brain when I look at it. But yeah, here it is. I mean, she's pretty, she, she does look very 2018, but I still really like this palette. And my favorite shade is, was it this rose gold? I swatched it in my top winter palettes video. So I'm just referencing old, old videos that I've swatched these in because if I swatched all of them right now, this video would be way too long. And I also have the Sweet Talk palette, which at one time was my favorite ColourPop palette. And then I just 
stopped using it. I think I maybe fell out of these, fell out of love with these coral shades. Now these two colors are from my I Think I Love You palette um, because in originally in this palette there were a couple of glitters here, which you know, I threw them out. Or I, I say threw them out, I really gave them away to a subscriber, but <laughs> here's what this palette is. And I just remember how much I loved this palette before and I now I hardly touch it. Hmm. Lastly, the last of my full size palettes, I have the original Naked, which actually is not very old in my collection. I purchased this when it was being discontinued. So it's not like I've had this since 2015. <laughs> like most other people, this is actually pretty new to me. The formula is not worth the price of Urban Decay, but I think it's nice enough. I think it works just about as well as some ColourPop shadows do. And I also have the Lorac Pro 3 palette, which is a kind of rose gold, um, more pinkish, coolish toned one. I, I got this from TJ Maxx for $9.99 and it's nice, but it really is not nearly as pink as I thought it was. Like I can't really build a truly pink look out of this palette, which is kind of what I was expecting with it, but that's my fault for not looking closely enough and just kind of getting, like looking at the vibe and how it's very like soft millennial pink, very nude kind of tones, but it really is just truly nude. And those, are all of my full-size palettes. Now let's go into this little organizer I have with some smaller like mini palettes. So first I have three of these Kaja Beauty Bento Trios. I freaking love these. If you've been on my channel for any amount of time you know that I am a big fan of these. This is the first one I got in Hella Azalea and I actually got it in a boxy charm um, pop-up sale maybe or something and these mattes work extremely well for the kind of shades they are. Like they're very bright and very colorful, um, but you know, I don't use these tones a lot, a lot. And so I liked the formula, but I didn't use the colors a lot. So that kind of motivated me to check out other color variations of this. So I also have Orange Blossom, which is the second one I purchased. And it just has some very, three very metallic, very wet looking, warm neutral colors. So there we go, there's that one. And I loved this one enough to purchase another one. And this one is in the shade Glowing Guava. I actually got this at TJ Maxx for I think $3. And I have, I'm seriously on the hunt for these. If any of y'all are at a TJ Maxx and find them, straight up DM me and I will pay you to ship it to me <laughs> if you buy them. But anyways, here's Glowing Guava, very pink toned, neutral colors, kind of a red cranberry tone here. And then the middle is this gorgeous metallic. Oh, these are so actually wet looking. I, I really like this formula and I just want all of them. I wanna catch them all. I have two of the mini Natasha Denona palettes. Here's the mini Glam, which is gorgeous. Love her as you can see, but then I also, some of this progress in terms of the use is because I dropped this palette. I didn't drop this palette. My cat pushed it off my table. So that's what happened with that. I also have the mini nude, which I don't love as much as the mini glam. I actually really enjoy the mini glam more than the mini nude, but both of these formulas are outstanding. It's just a matter of like color preference for me, but no matter what, choose a color store you'll like of any of the mini palettes from the mini nude on. So including like the mini Zendo and the mini retro palettes. And I think you'll be, you'll be, you'll be happy. <laughs> And here I also have depotted my Alamar Cosmetics Reina del Caribe palette in this $2, $2 magnetic palette from Makeup Forever. You can find this on Sephora's website. This is my favorite thing. They sell at Sephora straight up, this container. But there is the Alamar Reina del Caribe. It's the perfect size. Lastly, in my top row are these two Pat McGrath mini palettes. And I'm happy I bought these, they work well. They just, I don't know what I was expecting for them to like blow my socks off or anything, but um, this is the neutral one in the shade uh, Sublime. This one brown shade does overlap with my six pan Pat McGrath palette, but the rest of them were new to me, so I'm okay with that. And then I also have the Subversive, which has a lot of the shades from the Mothership 4 palette, which is called the Decadence palette. and. This is kind of more of like an art crafty kind of palette for me because these shimmers are so soft and creamy that you can actually layer them and get essentially every color of the rainbow of the Roy G. Biv by 
mixing and layering these and kind of smushing them together with the heat of your finger. So that's fun. And I like this shade Blue Blood to put all over my eyelid as like a very smoked out plummy kind of single shadow look. Next drawer, I have a couple of ColourPop Nine Pan palettes going coconuts. Love her. I think this is my probably my favorite ColourPop Nine Pan at least palette. This is just so well curated and these two shimmers are absolutely unreal. So I love this palette. Next is Aha uh -huh Honey. I was so excited. Shout out to all the OGs who were around when I got my Aha uh -huh Honey palette <laughs> and did a three looks one palette with this. I was so excited for this because I love yellows, but now I don't really wear like just, ooh, yellow, like yellow <laughs> kind of eyeshadow looks anymore. Um, so I don't reach into this a ton, but I love the shimmers in here and I reach into this palette for just one shimmer occasionally. I used to love Buzzkill as like an all over the lid single shadow look too because it's so yellow toned and um, I didn't have a lot of transition shades that are like that. So this definitely still does have a purpose in my collection. So I will keep it for a while, I think. Next I have this Alter Ego, not Alter Ego, <laughs> this Bad Habit palette. They, they're not even in business anymore, but this was supposed to be the dupe for the Huda Beauty Smoky Obsessions palette. Now I did a project where I scooped out and crushed together all of the metallic shades <laughs> and um, made like one ultimate mixed metallic eyeshadow. And to see what color that came out in, I also made a video for this. And um, I made a couple different variations of metallics with that. I keep this around just because it's a fun art project, but honestly, like the formula of the shimmers are kind of dry and I don't really use this, but I just kind of like looking at it sometimes, but eventually this will either be thrown away or given to a friend or whatnot. And lastly is the Nabla Cutie Palette in the Platinum variation. I used this the other day and this luxuriance shade is like actual crushed diamonds. It's literally like out of this world. I don't have anything else like this. And I want to perhaps get more of these Nabla Cutie palettes, but seriously, I just got this Nabla Cutie and the Dreamy 2 palette, so I really need to kind of rein myself in. But eventually Nabla Cutie palettes, I got my eye on you. In this last pal last drawer, this isn't an eyeshadow palette, this is a face palette, but I just keep it in this drawer, um, the Smashbox Cali Contour palette. And in here, I have my JD Glow shadows. Again, I swatched these in my favorite duochrome shadows. I made a dedicated video to these JD Glow Galaxy shadows when I first got them. This is uh, the Nat Natasha Denona Morgana, which is within the Sunrise, Sunset. I always get those two mixed up, but it was the original like $129 size warm tone palette. And this is IBY's Fire and Ice. I got it in an Ipsy. So I, I still kind of like these-ish. I don't dislike them enough to like throw them out or declutter them, um, but so I keep them in here. <laughs> and I already showed y'all my ColourPop and my Sydney Grace and Urban Decay Lounge sh single shadows. Um, if anything else, I do have a few like other things. So I have this little set of holiday 2019 of these Tarte, um, what are these called? Chrome paints. And I really like this. Yeah, that's it. I, I still have them from holiday 2019 and I don't anticipate decluttering these anytime soon. My favorite is Wild at Heart, which is that classic kind of pink to green blue duochrome. And I obviously love those kinds of colors. There's also Frosé, which is a pink to gold duochrome, if you can see in there. And then these other two I don't really use as much. There is um, Citrine and Pink Diamonds, which are more like true metallic colors without much of a shift. And those are all of my eyeshadows. Did you have fun? I hope so. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps me out and it lets me know what kind of content you'll like so I can make more of it. Also remember to check out Lara's video in my description box where she'll be sharing her eyeshadow palette collection. If you're not already subscribed, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go and hit the notification bell if it's not already on. Oh, my shoulder popped. This is my body now. I hope y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Remember that y'all are my treasure. Find the beauty in every day, but most importantly, be kind to yourselves. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.